Hi, this is uh, Le Cong uh, from the Broad Institute and the Montgomery Institute for Brain Research at MIT. Then, with all these exciting possibilities, we want to think about what are the basic principles that allow us to perform genome engineering. In general, there are two different modes of genome engineering. The first mode is called genetic modification. So this mode basically means we're trying to edit the DNA sequence within the genome. As an example, here we have a piece of genomic DNA with the red color labeling the genome interest or the target modification site uh, that we chose. And now what we need is a sequence-specific nucleus. And this nucleus will specifically recognize a target sequence and then perform a cleavage activity to induce a double-stranded double break. And this double-stranded break will allow us to perform two types of gene editing. The first type is called uh, non-homologous enzyme-mediated gene editing, which means a set of cellular enzymes will come in uh, to the site of double-stranded break and try to repair the break through simple enzyme. In this process, we will be able to introduce indels and some of these indels will allow us to knock out a gene or knock down a gene very efficiently. Another way is more precise, called homologous recombination. In this case, we'll need a template, as shown here, that will, in the presence of that double-stranded break, be recombined with the endogenous genome sequence. And then it replaces the original sequence with any sequence of your design. In this case, uh, labeled with a green color. So in the HR pathway, the double-stranded break will induce a very precise replacement or deletion or insertion of a genomic region, uh, which allows us to perform very accurate genome genetic modification. The second mode of gene modulation is epigenetic modulation. In this case, we're trying to modulate the epigenetic states of a certain genomic region, for example, the gene expression of the target region or the chromatin state. Again, we have here a genomic DNA that we would like to modulate with red labeling the target region. In this case, though, we will need two different parts. The first part is a sequence-specific anchor that recognizes the region of interest along the genome. And the second part is an activity-specific effector, which will carry out the modulation. So when they come together, the anchor will locate the effector to the specific gene, genome region where we would like to have the modulation. And then the effector will have its activity. In this case, if we have a transcription activator linked to the anchor, we'll activate target gene expression as shown here with you know, the red color and also the transcripts being induced by these genome engineering tool. And in another case, we can also silence the target chromatin through having a repressor domain, uh, a repressor linked to the anchor. In this way, we can repress target gene expression within the designed genomic region. Overall, we'll have bidirectional control of gene transcription in, uh, in mammalian cells with proper tours, uh, like that I just described. And imagine in the future, we can also perform other type of abgenetic modulation, such as heat modification or DNA methylation modification. 